Good afternoon. So my name is Prosper, and you're about to watch a um, live video or a video that has been recorded live on Facebook. So this video is actually being recorded um, live, and if you're catching this part, you're watching a replay. So I want you to hit the number two so that we know the people that we're actually working with. It also helps us to tailor our content. And if you're on YouTube, please leave us a comment. I see Anna Willen is in the house. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's been fantastic, and I'm so happy with the results that we're getting for our clients there, Anna. Thank you so much for the support right for those that are um you know just tuning in for the first time i want you to know that my mission doing this video is to actually help entrepreneurs like yourselves to actually set up reliable and lucrative businesses that are profitable and enjoyable and um we'll be utilizing you know uh, simple yet effective digital marketing strategies um and i also help newbies um or even the high profile executives to actually repair and set up their business systems and processes um, you know that work best in the industry and I do this daily, you know, we sit around here We talk about um, you know this blueprint that I created that is designed to help you start scale and grow a business That's actually profitable and enjoyable first of all you learn how to capture the right kind of people And then you put out the right kind of content and I want you to stick and fixate on the content part today because that's what we're going to be talking about how you actually educate your clients how you educate how you engage them how you educate them on what you actually provide and how you inspire them to want more be more and to spend more with you and how to actually provide them with value and position yourself as the right kind of person with the right kind of solution that they might be looking for. And then obviously how to convert those people into paying clients and then connect with them in such a way that they can now become, um, you know, um, you know, long lasting clients. I see uh, Steven Seaton is in the house. You're on your normal profile today. Thank you so much, my man. And um, I also see Kevin is in there too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, so obviously, without further ado, I also want that if you're watching this part of the video, so that I know how to tailor this com um, this uh, content, can you just type in, does your work, um, you know, do you sell B2B or do you sell B2C? Please let me know so that I can tailor this content. And I see Craig Kidden is in there. Have I sent you this, Craig? If you want a copy of this, just type in Blueprint and I'll definitely send you a copy of this so that you can um, get a look-see of what we, we normally talk about here, Craig. And I um, haven't seen you in a while. Hope everything is okay. Right. I want you to let me know. Are you working B2C or B2B? All right. B2C... You know, is 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 not my strongest forte. But if you're working B two B, B two B basically is back to basics. All right. Um, oh yes, I love a copy. Thanks. All right, Craig. Obviously, I only send it to people that actually want it. So as soon as this video is over, I will be sending it through to you. All right. So like I was talking about, you know, we're going to be talking about the trends that are actually working at the moment. If you have not been, um, if you've been paying attention, you would have noticed that Facebook changed the algorithm um, at the beginning of January. And what that entailed now was that, um, you know, the, the reach in the newsfeed got lower and lower and lower. And even with private profiles, um, you know, if people were not enjoying the content or if people were not watching your videos, um, you know, the reach goes lower and lower and lower. All right. So that shouldn't deter you, though, as a, as a business person, because you are there to give value. Right. You are there to help people. And before we actually really jump on to, um, you know, um, everything else that we're going to be talking about uh, today, I would like to ask you also a simple question. Um, and I, I want you to think about it. Why do you think that people come to the internet? Can you please type in the comments below? Why do you think people actually come to the internet or they have the internet on their phone or they pay for Wi-Fi within their, their homes or they freak out when they check into a hotel that doesn't have Wi-Fi? Why do people go on the internet according to what you actually think? Can you just um, you know let me know in the comments there? Because 
when you now start understanding why people come to the internet, you will start really pulling back on the content that you're putting out there as well. All right, because at the end of the day, we might think that everybody likes what we're putting out or everybody likes what we're dishing out, but we might actually be deluding ourselves. We might actually be, um, you know, going on under, um, you know, false, uh, you know, assumptions that people actually really care about what we've got to say, you know. And Craig says they're looking for a solution to a problem or looking to catch up with friends. All right, I'll go with the last bit that you've just mentioned there, looking to catch up with friends. I see Harris Sakanda has just tuned in. Thank you so much for, um, you know, tuning in, brother. And also, um, welcome to this Lunch and Learn. It's probably the first one that you're going to watch one of many every single day at 2 p.m. AST. We sit around here and we talk how you can also start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Grace Mugabe, I see you're there as well. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. So the last question that I posed was, why do you think people come to the internet? And it's basically one of these three things. People are coming to the internet because they're bored. So they're looking for entertainment. People are coming to the internet because they're looking for something, so it has to be information. And they would be 5% of the times looking to shop for what's new or what their friends are buying so that they can also, um, you know, catch up with the Joneses, all right? So if you're going to be putting out content there in the market, make sure that it's providing entertainment Make sure that it's informative and make sure that there's some capability for people to either make a purchase or whatnot, whatnot. If your content is not touching on any of those, um, you know, aspects that I just put out there and you, you're not looking into what's in it for me, for the client, what's in it for the client. Craig, can you type in our statement there? What's in it for the customer, then you've already lost their attention. You've already lost their will to even want to know anything more to do with you. I see Christian store has just tuned in. Thank you so much. All right. So what Facebook just recently did in January is now starting to bear effect right now. Um, you know, March, April, as we go along. And I just really wanted people to understand that, you have to make sure that you're either entertaining, you're either informing, or you're either providing value in such a way that people would like to communicate with your business through and through, you know? Because there's one thing that us as business people do not actually understand. The way we use social media and the internet is totally different to the average person, you know? We show up just to put our stuff and then we go back to our work. What happens to Sally or Jenny or, 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 or Lucy that is constantly on social media and they studies, you can look it up. I think um, there's guys that did a study and then they say an average um, human being or an average person spends more than five years and four months, yeah, five years and four months to be exact while looking at social media pages. That is the YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. And that's in a whole lifetime. And when they broke it down, they broke it down to say, um, you know, they spend over two hours, you know, on social media. So you can imagine in that two hours, they don't want to be bombarded with ads or people that are not talking about themselves. What's in it for everyone with the content that you're putting out there, like what Craig is saying, you know? They want to see you put out stuff that helps them, entertains them, and keeps them motivated. Maybe they're in between jobs or they're transiting on, on, on public transport. So at the end of the day, you have to make sure that whatever content you're putting out there in order to engage these people, you fully aware who this person is that you're sending this information to. Because if you're not fully aware who you're sending this information to, how are you going to know that this information is vital for their own existence? How are you going to know that it actually works or it suits their worldview? I see Justin Dean has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a fantastic day um, there where you are. So this whole new 
change in the algorithm is a wake up call for a lot of small to medium businesses that have just been bombarding um, you know, their audiences with information that is not relevant or that does not suit their worldview. I want to pause something that I want you to actually start paying attention to right now in as much as now we live in an in, in, in a, in a, in a information field um, environment. So back in the time, information just used to come from one central post, which was the television or a billboard or the radio. But now everyone or every small to medium business person is now a media house, which means they're putting out content there. That means they are all vying for the attention of the same client. Now, how are you separating yourself from everybody else who's just saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Don't you think the customers that you're going out for have already put, you know, blinkers to make sure that, you know, they just get the information that is relevant for them. That's why sometimes your clients, you have to encourage them to to click the button so that they can see your content first or to teach them to spot out your content from a mile away, you know. And if I'm doing this correctly, I'm hoping that I'm teaching the people that are going to be my audience that I only show up on my live at 2 p.m., not at any other time. So you should figure out how can you train your audience if you really want to gain their attention. Because attention is now a scarce commodity right now in and off, um, you know, in, in, in people are too busy trying to survive and trying to get entertainment and be educated at the same time. How are you, you know, you know, you know, adding value to them as a as a person or adding value to them as whoever they are in, in society? So you should be very, very careful now with the content that you're putting out there. Are you actually engaging these people or are you just spraying and praying, hoping that somebody would just watch your video, share it or pass it on to somebody else? Are you educating them on what you actually do? Because what we have also not realized as small to medium business owners is what we're doing used to be done in-house. It used, if you're a graphic designer, there used to be an arts department within a business where an accountant will just go in and say, can you design a, an invoice for us? And you're all still under the same roof. But now that we've all separated, we need somebody to bring us together. Now, are you educating your audience as to what you specifically can do for them in order for them to notice who you are, um, you know, a mile away. Because there's so much that is happening around them for them to take particular notice of who you are or if they should actually care. And that's the reason why they're not being seen or you are not being able to see them within the, the, the news feed. And I see Charlie O'Shea has just tuned in. Thank you so much. And Nicole... How are you doing, my love? Hope everything else is perfect uh, with you right there. You know, so the, the things that I'm going to be talking about today, in some ways, are exciting. And whenever new technology comes about, people, people jump onto it. And guess what marketers do? Marketers tend to ruin it. But now that Facebook is course correcting, I don't want you to also fall into that rabbit hole of not being able to reach out to your audience, you know? And the world as we know it is, is moving incredibly fast. It's moving at a really fast pace. You know, today I was watching, there's a video, there's a video of a new mobile phone that is in production, which I think I would possibly buy. And it, it's got like uh, propellers at the back and it's like a drone phone in and of itself. So you don't actually need that whole big drone. You can actually have a phone that can linger around you there and then you can take videos of yourself and, 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 and you know, and, and, and still create content. So the world is moving incredibly fast and, and our audience is being bombarded. They're also trying to catch up with their bills. They're trying to catch up with their family, with their jobs, etc., etc. And you coming in there with your content as well, you're not making life any easier for them, of which this is what you're supposed to be doing, making life easier for your audience. So in some ways it might be exciting, but 
for entrepreneurs that are looking for you know the next big idea to 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 be in front of their audience and some other business owners that are trying to keep up with all the changes in the market it can also be dizzy and exhausting and guess what then that that does once you are not clear on who you are or what your message is your audience also is not clear and guess what they do they just you know uh, take away the the one thing they have the most on you which is their attention so you don't want to be losing out and it's going to take you a while in order for you to regain that attention, especially with the way Facebook is taking away, um, you know, the reach of, of, of our, our content in the newsfeed. You know, there's, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of examples of companies who, who tanked because they did not heed to, to the warning signs of, of what was being brought about by technology. It's good for some people, but it's not going to work for everybody else. Now, can you imagine those people that were, um, you know, invested in, in, in the way Kodak was working or Nokia was working. And then when new technologies came about, they did not have a foot to stand on, you know. And with the way technology is moving really fast, like right now, we can we can safely say if you're not, you know, utilizing this Facebook live feature or if you're not putting out video content for your audience, you've lost them. But how do you keep up as a business person? How do you make sure you are on trend yet still being relevant? You see, because there's a balance right there, you know, because chances are you might be there. You, you might have the best business out there. But if your audience doesn't know an, about it, if they're not well versed with what you're capable of helping them out with, do you think they're going to come in and knock on your house's door and say, hey, Stephen, hey, Nicole, it's time for you to start selling to us? I don't think so, you know. So what is it that you should actually look for? Should you be looking out for the next big revolution? I don't think so. Look for what you actually have right now and capitalize on that to make sure that your message is heard and you're cutting through the noise, you know? And guess what? If you do that, you will survive for the next five to 10 years. In as much as everything seems to be going fast and changing at the, sa at the same time, the one thing you should really, really make sure you've got in check is that you've got a message that is going to a particular market and the media can always change, all right? Your message should go to a specific market, all right? Back in the time, they used to call that the niche or whatever it is, but I would like you to concentrate on a new word. It's called a worldview. If your message is going to a specific clientele with the same worldview as you, you can use whatever media you want. All right. I'm going to explain what worldview is. Back in the time, we used to know all about niches to say your niche is kids or women that are between the age of 26 to 36. All right. But I want to counter that and say, what if a 26 year old is in university and is um you know really busy with her books and a 36 year old is looking to get a promotion within their work these are totally two different people and if your messaging is not right then you're definitely not going to hit the nail on the head with these two different people i want to introduce you to what is called a world view all right so your world view is how do these people perceive the world around them Maybe they're vegetarian, maybe they like um, animals too much, or maybe they are lactose intolerant. That's a worldview around them. So you need to make sure that whatever message you're putting out there is in direct correlation to how somebody feels at that particular moment in their life. Does that make sense? Because if you are just going to go in and spray and pray with your marketing, can you imagine if that 26 year old is probably um, um, lactose intolerant and there you are peddling, um, you know, you know, maybe protein shakes that have milk substitutes in there. They're still within your age range, but they don't have the same worldview as you. So you need to make sure that your message is so distinct and people can actually tell who you are talking to without them putting in the guesswork. All right. And that's how you then put through all this engagement. First of all, people need to figure out, do they need you or do they need whatever you're selling? And then you educate them on how to utilize it and how to buy it from you. 
Because sometimes we might just think people know who we are or what we stand for or what it is that we actually provide. When in actual fact, people know Jack Diddley. It's because we're not putting out the right kind of content out there. You know? And especially these days with the widespread frustration with social media and other social platforms, how then are you going to be putting your message out there without annoying Sally or without annoying Ruth down the road who is just going to skip your content or skip your video just because they're not understanding what you're saying? Because this is a big one. And perhaps the most important thing. Because you know what? Ten years ago, social media was a, was a revolution. You know, it was what everybody was talking about. But now everybody's sort of running away from it because they're being bombarded with ads and people that are not congruent with their message and people that are not specific as to what it is that they want people to do after they've seen their videos. So you have to be putting out call to action. You have to be really specific as to who are you talking to because you can't just spray and pray anymore. People are tired. So if you're not getting people's attention, then you are simply wasting their time, your money and your effort and maybe your money as well. You know, before, you know, it was like, ah, what's the next big social media network? Let's jump onto it. But people are like, oh, I need to get off this social network because I'm being bombarded with ads. There's now this frustration, this and you know what I mean? So what does this actually mean for your business? As if you're a small business person, what does it actually mean? Social media has been fully integrated with our day-to-day -day lives. So if somebody is not a fan of guns, all right? If somebody is not a fan of guns and you accidentally or you share something that has to do with guns, guess what they're going to do? First, they're going to delete you. And second of all, they are just going to think of you as the worst person, um, depending on what's happening within their life and their environment right there. So you want to make sure that you specify what your worldview is so that the people that actually need to hear your message will start following you. And the way you use social media has to start changing, you know? Because everybody's now using it as an extension of who they are as a person. So if you're not being authentic and you're not really putting out who you are specifically because you might be attracting people that are lactose intolerant and then you pause with a McDonald's milkshake. Guess what people are going to think about you then? You know, because people are tired with being hit with either advertising or people on false pretenses. You know, they're just trying to see their friends. They really want to see, you know, how their family is doing. So you're going to have to change the way you actually social media if you actually want to win this game. If not, get back to the phones and start calling because that's where you're going to you're going to find, you know, people that would actually want to work with you. You know, and good luck with that. I must really agree, agree with, with, with this last sentiment that I just put out. You know, after all, social media is, a, is supposed to be about us. It's supposed to be about who we are as people. It's supposed to be about how we connect, how we interact. But now it's turned into, um, you know, a, a, an engine for pumping cash for, for investors. And, 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 and the average user is pissed. They're pissed off. They're tuning out of our messages. They're tuning out of, of our ads. So we now need to figure out who are we as a person and then interact. Because like what Mark Zuckerberg says, meaningful interactions. You know, good day, Sonia Moody. Thank you so much for tuning in. So if the stuff that you're putting out there is not showing you as a person or if you're not doing live videos that actually show who you are and how you can actually help people by helping them, I, I suggest you go back to the drawing board a little bit, figure out who is the person that you really want to reach out to. What pain do they actually have? Because this keeps changing, you know. And what payoff is the product that you're putting out there? And what is the product? Because if you're not telling people to buy or people to do anything with your content, then 
it's also not helping. People need to be told what to do after, how to do it, and who they should contact and how to contact you. But they have to know, like, and trust you first. Because without that, you're missing out. You know? Other than that, you're just annoying your audience. And you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be the person that's annoying your audience up until they actually, you know, delete you off of their Facebook or actually um, have nothing to do with you. So figure out, are you putting out content that's engaging? Are you putting out content that's actually educating your audience on what to want and who to get it from? Are you at least inspiring them? Because the whole world is full of trouble after trouble, you know, and people are bloated with negativity. So if your content is not inspiring them to want to be, do and have a happier existence, then forget it, man. Are you positioning yourself as the person that they cannot get this anywhere else in the world? And be the person that's providing value with your content. The game has changed so much in as much as if your message is not speaking directly or, you know, specifically to an audience that needs to hear that at that particular time, then I'm afraid you're only just spraying and praying with your, with your content. You know, and it starts, it really starts with who you are as a person. Figure out what are my values? Who do I need to serve? And then all this cry about Facebook not reaching the audience, you become resourceful with what you already have. You start leveraging what you already have learned. And it becomes a happier existence for everybody involved. Because like I said right from the start, the way you use your Facebook or social media is totally different to the average customer. The average customer spends two hours online so that they can figure out what their friends are doing, what they're wearing, and all the like like that. So how are you fitting into their daily usage of social media without you being annoying? That's all I'm asking. That's all they're asking for, for you to just be a normal human being that would help them be, do, and have a happier existence. I see Elsie has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Amanda Bate, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a long time. I just sent you a friend request. Let me know if you saw it, you know. At the end of the day, I really want that you, um, you know, you, you, you're doing absolutely fantastic with your you know, social media efforts and with everything else that comes along with moving your message out there. Figure out to yourself, are you actually engaging this audience? Are you educating them? Are you being inspirational? Are you positioning yourself as the person that they can go to every other time that they're looking for your kind of content? And are you providing value to them instead of you just being yet another person who is just making their news feed unbearable? You know, so if anyone has any questions with regards to what we talked about today, it's all good. And make sure whatever you're doing, if you're putting content out there using written format or video, it just has to be congruent to your audience with their worldview and stay true to yourself. That's the best way for you to, to actually be consistent with the work that you're putting out there. Because also, also, people are tired of one click wonders. So if you're here today, you're not there tomorrow, people are not going to be sure whether you're worth their time or not. So you want to make sure that people depend on you, you know. And uh, Kristen says, so how do you connect to your audience? Um, Kristen, I, I see you've got a group, right? Um, I, think, I think a group is also a very good platform for you to figure out if the people that are in there are not just being held hostage. Ask them what they actually want. Ask them how you can help them by actually helping them. You know, feedback that you get if that your audience is, is paying attention is either are they paying you? If they're not, figure out what can you do to get closer to them paying you. Because there's no point in you just spraying and praying, um, you know, with your marketing without... Um, 
you know, without getting any feedback from them. Because we do this, obviously, yes, for our why, but the main reason is to actually get paid. And Christine says, how do I find the language that they use? Right. So the language that they use is already out there. There's already people that are taking their money. Who are they buying from currently, Christine? And what books are they reading on Amazon? All right. So if you figure out that aspect or what groups are they in already, be a fly on the wall and figure out what are the groups that they're already in that they, that they are paying attention to. Because no matter what, somebody or your customer is paying someone for something right now if they're not paying you for it. So figure out who are they already paying that is doing the same thing as you. Find out how do they speak to them, how do they connect to them. Go on Amazon, figure out what books are they reading, figure out on YouTube what videos are they watching, who is, yes, exactly, who is taking their money right now. Because somebody is, if you're not, you know, because if you're not, you know, connecting with them at a level that they are trust they trust you enough to release their money somebody is getting that money so figure out how are they talking to them up until your audience releases that money i really hope this video um how do you search on amazon okay so how do you search on amazon how do you search on amazon with me maybe you look at what's currently happening or what are the trends or find out when people are um you know in your industry what is it that they are looking for mainly all right so maybe people are looking for how do i get the best um you know uh place to get funding or you know uh the, whatever it is that you do um is it is it funding or just type in so yeah you just look at the books that are actually um what do you call it? You, you look at the books that people are actually reading that are under the same topic and what people are actually writing. Because um, if one book is already out there on the market, guess what? Some clever person has read it and is writing blogs and doing videos about it already. Now, um, Grace says Facebook business manager has some stats which could help you based on the people who have liked your page. That also is true. Um, the business manager, or if you've got Google Analytics, it tells you where these people have been, what they've been searching, etc., etc. So it is something that you can also utilize as a tool to figure out exactly what people are, um, you know, watching, uh, reading, and paying attention to. All right. In the meantime, um, oh, Christine, just interview the people that are your exact audience. Find out exactly what it is that you can do to help them because that's where you get most of the answers, you know, and that's the feedback that you really want to. Don't be afraid to ask the people that are going to be paying you later how you can create for and relate for them, okay, and relate to them, okay. All right, so if you've got any other questions, let's continue the conversation there. Um, in the meantime, I really got a dash, but um, thank you all so much for indulging me today, and I'm hoping that this is my creation of a permission asset that will then allow me in the future for us to actually do, um, you know, transactions together. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, and um, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I really want to be able to help you by actually helping you. Bye for now.